Hi, today I want to share with you free of a sin conscience. There are so many believers that struggle with a sin conscience and uh, Jesus came to set you free of a sin conscience. Uh, what you need is a healthy conscience, a conscience that is perfected uh, in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And uh, I just want to read to you one scripture. The first scripture I want to read to you is out of Hebrews 10, verse 1 to 2. It says, therefore, the law, having a shadow of the good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never with these same sacrifices which they offer continually, year by year, make those who approach perfect, for then would they not have ceased to be offered. For the worshipers, once purified, would have had no more conscience of sin. So we see that under the old covenant, people had a sin conscience, and they were offering, offering uh, sacrifices under the law. And the law was just a shadow of the good things to come. The good things that, that come already came through Jesus Christ. It is already established through Jesus Christ. And there's so many believers that struggle today with a sin conscience. So the first question that we need to ask today is, what is your conscience? Your conscience is, if you make a study in the Bible, then you will see that your conscience is basically your heart. It is that which you are conscious of yourself, of your environment. It is, um, it is basically the things that you do automatically. It is part of your being. Uh, you, you don't struggle to, to do that. It is like someone who is driving a car every day. They, it, they stop consciously. They, they uh, 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 obey the traffic laws consciously. They're all the time conscious of these things because they are trained to, to drive a motor car and they can think of other things while they drive their car. And you are conscious of, of things. Some people text while they drive. Some people uh, speak on their cell phone while they drive and then still uh, uh, obey the, the traffic laws. So uh, it's basically just an illustration to help you that your heart is your very conscience. It is also the part of your life that you believe with. So um, uh, uh, the Bible say, with the heart we believe unto righteousness. So your conscience is, is basically your heart. And uh, you need to establish your heart in the things of Christ. Now, you can believe in Jesus Christ. You can believe he is risen from the dead. You can believe that he paid for sin. And you can believe that he is seated on the right hand of the Father. But you can have a sin conscience, even though you believe Jesus did all these things. And if you have a sin conscience, then it means you don't believe that those things that Jesus has done is for you. You don't believe it's personally for you. You have a sin conscience inside. That means you have inside of your belief system, you think that you come short or you fall short to the promises of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, you need to be set free of a sin conscience. And uh, uh, another scripture that I want to read to you, and uh, we just want to give you good news from here on. The first scripture is in Hebrews 9, verse 11 to 12. Listen to what this scripture says. He said, but Christ came as high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is not of this creation, not with blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Then in verse 13, he goes on, and here comes the good news, and he says, For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. So the blood of Jesus Christ cleans your conscience to serve the living God. Um, uh, and it says here that it's, it cleans your conscience from dead works. So that means if you have a sin conscience, you will always be into dead works. That means 
you will s submit yourself to old covenant principles uh, and you will try to live up to a standard. And, uh, but if you got the revelation of what Jesus Christ has done for you, uh, if you got the revelation that he paid for all sins, past, present, and future, then uh, here's the reality. Your heart will be cleansed of a sin conscience. Um, another very good scripture, and this scripture is the one that put it together. It says in Hebrews 10, verse 12 to 14, it says, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God from henceforth expecting till his enemies made, made his footstool for by one offering he has perfected forever those who are sanctified. So Jesus came and he has perfected us by one offering once for all. And that is the good news of the gospel today is that Jesus Christ has perfected you already. You don't have to work to live up to a standard. You don't have to try to live up to a standard anymore. You just need to believe that Jesus already perfected you through the finished work of the cross and the resurrection. His blood has taken away the sin conscience. There is no more sacrifice for sins. There cannot be any sacrifice for sins anymore because Jesus is the Lamb of God that took away the sin of the world. It's done once for all. God got absolutely nothing against you. And therefore, what you need to do is, is that you need to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. You need to begin to see that Jesus, you identify with Jesus, and you begin to see yourself in Jesus and Christ in you and understand that you are not a sinner, that your conscience has been perfected once for all. And uh, another scripture I want to read to you is out of Hebrews 6, verse 1. Listen to what he says there. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. So the Bible says that me and you have to go on to perfection and leave the elementary principles behind not laying again a, a, a foundation of repentance from dead works. So the second question we need to ask you today is, what is dead works? Dead works means that you have a sin conscience and you are working for something you already received in Jesus Christ. You are working for all the promises that Jesus has already provided for you, all the things that he has freely given for you. You don't believe that those things have personally been given unto you because you have a sin conscience. So therefore today, you can go on to perfection. You can leave behind the elementary principles. You don't have to lay a foundation of repentance from dead works anymore. No, you have been saved. You have been perfected by one offering once for all in Jesus Christ.